grace and peace to you in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I'm the Reverend Dr. Hilary Livingston, pastor of Head of Christiana Presbyterian Church in Newark, Delaware. We were founded back in 1706 at the headwaters of the Christiana Tributary. The head in our name means source, not in charge of. We believe Jesus is the source of our life and our love, and we hope you feel God's love flowing through us to you today. Love lives here. Love flows from here. We hope you find being here a blessing. Welcome. Grace and peace to you in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. We welcome you to this pre-recorded virtual service of worship. We're glad you've joined us for this time of worship. Our organist is Linnea Raphael. Our soloist is Abigail Kramer. If you'd like to follow along with our worship service, you can find our bulletin with the order of service on our Head of Christiana Presbyterian Church Facebook page or our website at hocpc.org. We encourage you to follow along with the responsive readings and prayers and the hymns, and we hope you find this time of worship a blessing to you. Let us now join our hearts in worship. Friends, please join with me in our call to worship. I love the Lord because he has heard my voice and my supplications, because he has inclined his ear to me. Therefore, I will call on him as long as I live. Let us worship God. Please join with me in prayer. Let us pray. Almighty God, you call your church to witness that in Christ we are reconciled to you. Help us so to proclaim the good news of your love, that all who hear it may turn to you, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Friends, please join with me in singing our opening hymn, Rejoice, ye pure in heart, verses 1 and 4. Let us join together and sing.
friends, if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. Yet if we confess our sin, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive us our sin and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. In this assurance, let us come before God, confessing our sin together using the unison prayer printed in the bulletin to be followed by a time of silent personal confession. Please pray with me. Eternal God, in whom we live and move and have our being, whose face is hidden from us by our sins, and whose mercy we forget in the blindness of our hearts. Cleanse us from all our offenses, and deliver us from proud thoughts and vain desires, that with reverent and humble hearts we may draw near to you, confessing our faults, confiding in your grace, and finding in you our refuge and strength, through Jesus Christ your Son. Friends, hear the good news. If anyone is in Christ, there is a new creation. Everything old has passed away. See, everything has become new. All this is from God, who has reconciled us to himself through Christ and has given us the ministry of reconciliation. Friends, believe the good news of the gospel. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. May the God of mercy who forgives all your sins, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Friends, we will now turn to a reading from God's holy word. Our scripture reading today comes from the book of Romans, chapter 12, verses 9 through 21. O Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Hear now the word of the Lord. Let love be genuine. Hate what is evil. Hold fast to what is good. Love one another with mutual affection. Outdo one another in showing honor. Do not lag in zeal. Be ardent in spirit. 
serve the Lord. Rejoice in hope. Be patient in suffering. Persevere in prayer. Contribute to the needs of the saints. Extend hospitality to strangers. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse them. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Weep with those who weep. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be haughty, but associate with the lowly. Do not claim to be wiser than you are. Do not repay anyone evil for evil, but take thought of what is noble in the sight of all. If it is possible, so far as it depends on you, live peaceably with all. Beloved, never avenge yourselves, but leave room for the wrath of God. For it is written, vengeance is mine. I will repay, says the Lord. No, if your enemies are hungry, feed them. If they are thirsty, give them something to drink. For by doing this, you will heap burning coals on their heads. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. Friends, this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, this pandemic has affected musicians especially hard, as many of them can't sing or play their musical instruments in public, in crowded spaces, due to the threat of spreading the COVID virus. Musicians, like everyone else, have had to adapt to new ways of performing their craft. Perhaps you've seen some of these. Perhaps you've seen some of these Zoom musical performances on social media. They show the singers and the musicians performing their individual part from their home, and then they are joined together in a glorious musical number, and you see all the the little individual boxes on the Zoom screen of all of these musicians in all different parts of the country and the world singing and playing their parts, and they're all beautifully produced together in this perfect harmonious song. If you haven't seen some of these, you should Google them because they're quite impressive what they're able to do. Now, of course, when you're watching these Zoom performances, it appears nothing short of miraculous. How do they get all those singers and musicians to sound so good together, each performing their own individual part over Zoom? And they make it look so easy. Yet it actually takes a lot of work and coordination to get all those individual musicians to sound so good together. It takes hours and hours of practice and recording and editing and producing to make that four or five minute video music clip you're watching online. Great music that seems effortless is really the result of lots of hard work and practice behind the scenes. Musicians work hard to bring their individual parts together with the other musicians to produce great music that is not only in tune and technically balanced, but also powerful and moving. I think the image of this kind of music is appropriate in looking at today's passage of scripture and learning how we can apply it to our lives. We're going to be talking about what it means to live in harmony with one another. This is part of our continuing series, Think Like a Deacon, on the one another passages of the New Testament. Deacons are those charged with caring for others in the church and the community through acts of mercy and service. And during this pandemic, I'm encouraging all of us to think like a deacon and care for one another during this challenging time. We've looked at such passages as love one another, serve one another, forgive one another, and many others. And today we're going to look at the command to live in harmony with one another. Just as great music is best when we are in good harmony with one another, so our Christian fellowship is sweetest when we are relationally in harmony with one another. So let's explore what it means to live in harmony with one another today. We're in the book of Romans this week, another letter historically attributed to the Apostle Paul. 
The letter of Romans lays out a comprehensive theology of God's redemption in Christ, as well as practical directions for how we are to live our lives together as Christ's followers under the direction of the Holy Spirit. Romans was written to a diverse group of Christians, both from Jewish and Gentile backgrounds. We learned in previous messages that these two groups often struggled to get along with one another in the early church. And many of Paul's letters were addressed to these groups, urging them to live into their unity in Christ as a way of overcoming division and conflict that they often experienced between the two groups. After spending the first two-thirds of the letter of Romans teaching about the general theme of humanity's redemption in Christ and the new life available to Christ's followers through the Holy Spirit, Paul turns to practical matters, beginning in verse 12, in chapter 12, rather. He urges both Jewish and Gentile followers of Jesus to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual act of worship. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your minds, so that you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. As living sacrifices, the Roman followers of Christ were to live together in unity, each sharing their unique spiritual gifts with one another to build up the whole body together as a whole. Then Paul gets even more specific as to what this kind of life lived together in the Spirit looks like. Beginning in verse 9, Paul lays out the marks of the genuine Christian life. It is a life marked by loving each other, persevering together in hope, being patient in suffering, praying consistently, being ardent in the faith, providing for one another's needs, blessing those who persecute you, and rejoicing with those who rejoice while weeping with those who weep. There's a lot to unpack here, and we won't have time to address all of these items appropriately in this message, but I want us to focus on the command in verse 16 of chapter 12. The one another command, live in harmony with one another. In English, harmony is the quality of forming a pleasing and consistent whole, or simply a state of agreement or concord. The root of the English word harmony comes from the Greek word joint, referring to how our joints connect the various parts of our body together so they can function properly. However, the original Greek translation of this verse in Romans 12, 16 uses much simpler language. The construction in the Greek is interesting. It's literally the verb to think, to consider, or to feel about someone or something, combined with the pronoun yourself and the phrase with one another. The word harmony is added in English translations to emphasize the oneness we should have with one another, but it is not actually in the original Greek. The literal Greek is actually much simpler. Literally, it says something like this. Consider yourselves with one another, meaning frame yourself in references, in reference to one another. Instead of considering ourselves independently of one another, we are to consider ourselves as interdependently connected and tied to one another. And so the command to live in harmony with one another is framed in reference to how we are to think about ourselves in comparison with others in the church. The full verse, live in harmony with one another, do not be haughty, but associate with the lowly. Do not claim to be wiser than you are. Living in harmony with one another means thinking about ourselves appropriately in relationships. We are to be humble, not considering ourselves better than others. Instead of trying to impress people who we think have higher status than us, we are to freely associate with those whom society deems as lower in status than us. Just as Jesus spent time with the poor and the sick and the outcast, so we too are to do the same things. 
This attitude also affects how we treat those who do us wrong. Instead of retaliating or seeking revenge, we are to forgive and leave judgment to God. We are to bless those who harm us and not curse them. Verse 17, do not repay anyone evil for evil, but take thought for what is noble in the sight of all. Now, of course, we can't change other people's behavior toward us, but we can control how we respond to others' behavior. If it is possible, so far as it depends on you, live peaceably with all, verse 18. And we leave the judgment to God. Verse 19, Beloved, never avenge yourselves, but leave room for the wrath of God. For it is written, Vengeance is mine. I will repay, says the Lord. Instead, we are to treat our enemies well. Paul summarizes this section in verse 21. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. Obviously, this kind of living doesn't come naturally to us in our human nature, and so we need to practice this kind of living in the power of the Spirit in order to get better at it. We must also remember, as we do with all the one another commandments, that it's not about our own strength. This kind of living needs to be done in the Holy Spirit or we shall fail. So how do we begin to practice living in harmony with one another? Merriam-Webster Dictionary defines harmony as the combination of different musical notes played or sung at the same time to produce a pleasing sound or a pleasing combination or arrangement of different things. The best choirs don't sound like a bunch of random individuals singing together, but they sound like one coherent sound, one voice, even if there are individuals singing different parts. In other words, the best choirs make good harmony together. When a choir is singing in good harmony, there are different parts being sung, but they are being sung in such a way that the different parts meld into one sound. The chord structures with different notes complement each other and don't clash with others. Or if they do clash, this is intentional for a time, but then resolves into a perfectly balanced chord. Songs have a melody, a main musical part that the other voice parts complement. Sometimes one voice part will have the melody, while other, voices part, while other voice parts have harmony. And those singing harmony support and complement the melody without overpowering it. When the harmonies are sung well, the music sounds beautiful, in tune and in balance as the composer intended. When the harmonies are sung poorly, either out of tune or out of balance, the song, song, the song sounds off balance and just kind of off. Have you ever heard a song that was sung poorly, sung out of tune or out of balance and it just kind of made you cringe? I think that's what God hears when Christians aren't in harmony with one another in Christ. Just like in a real choir where good harmonies take a lot of work and practice, so Christian harmony in the body of Christ takes a lot of hard work and practice and a lot of help from the Holy Spirit. We practice living, our living in harmony when we are with one another in worship and fellowship situations. And this is all the more challenging during this pandemic where digital and electronic communication make it all the more difficult to remain in harmony with one another. One of the ways we can practice being in harmony is to learn to listen to one another. Rather than always be the ones talking or convincing others that we're right and they're not, listening can be a powerful way of being in tune with one another. Another characteristic of good choirs is their, their ability of singers to listen to one another. Good music is not just all about making sound, it's about listening to the other parts. In a choir where the singers hear their parts in balance with the other parts around them, they are able to tune their voice to the other singers and balance out their sound with others singing. And the result is better. It sounds more unified and together 
like one voice, even if many voices are contributing to that sound. And we can take this principle into our Christian fellowship. When we are listening to one another, we are more in tune with where one another is in the body. We are less focused upon ourselves and our own agendas when we are listening to others. How many times have you heard a disagreement with someone that only got worse because you weren't really listening to the other person? Miscommunication and misunderstanding leads to conflict and broken relationships. But learning to listen to one another can help us begin to experience harmony in our relationships with one another. The next time you are in a conflict with someone, ask yourself, did I take time to really listen to that person? Or did I simply respond with anger and defensiveness? Learning to listen to one another can clear up misconceptions we may have about others. It can also help us empathize with others. We talked about empathy in previous messages. To review, empathy is more than just sympathy, which is merely feeling bad for somebody. But empathy is actually putting ourselves in someone else's shoes so that we can really experience what things are like for them. We are less likely to criticize or judge people when we have true empathy for them. Our harmony is ultimately a gift of God in Christ and not something we can manufacture on our own. Jesus came not just to reconcile us to God, but also to reconcile us to one another, to break down all the barriers that divide us, barriers of race and color and gender and socioeconomic status and education level and political affiliation and anything that might divide us from one another. God has a beautiful song that he wants us as the body of Christ to sing to the world, a song of forgiveness and redemption, and reconciliation, and healing through Jesus Christ. And everyone has a part to play. Just like an orchestra has many instruments, so the church has many members, each with different gifts and abilities. Earlier in Romans 12, verses 4 through 7, Paul says, Now there are a variety of gifts, but the same Spirit. There There are varieties of services, but the same Lord. And there are a variety of activities, but it is the same God who activates all of them in everyone. To each is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. Just as an orchestra needs a full complement of instruments to play great music, so the church needs its full complement of members playing together in harmony each playing their part artfully and skillfully with others. Whether we are light and airy like a woodwind, or bold and brassy like a trumpet, or deep and strong like a timpani, or measured and steady like a bass, all our parts are needed to play this glorious symphony of God's redemption in Christ Jesus. As our conductor, the Holy Spirit sets the tempo and guides us in the flow of the composition. As we keep time the Spirit, with the Spirit and follow the Spirit's rhythms, the music takes shape, becoming deeper and richer as each unique part is added to the melody. I believe this music, this song of God's redemption, moves through our world in this way. It might start quiet at first, pianissimo, but then grows to a crescendo, gradually to forte. The glorious music of the gospel infiltrates our hardened world, lowers defenses, and opens minds and hearts to God's redeeming love. Such sweet music has the power to float above the noise of our culture, silence critics, and make people stop and listen. Where there is dissent, where is the dissonance of disunity, we can sing a song of harmony and goodwill. Where there is the melancholy of pain and despair, we can uplift with a melody of encouragement. Where there is the cacophony of hatred, we can play a song of love. Where there is the harsh clanging of violence and corruption and death, we can pound a pulse of renewal and regeneration and resurrection. 
to those in our world who are hurting and broken and fractured and divided and suffering. God's glorious symphony is literally music to their ears. So friends, under the Holy Spirit's direction, let us learn to sing the song in perfect harmony with one another, regardless of our background or anything else that may divide us. Our hurting, divided, broken world needs to hear the song so it can be healed and made new in Jesus Christ. So let us learn to sing the song of God's love together, to live in harmony with one another, singing with one voice the salvation and redemption found in Jesus Christ. And may God bless this message to our hearing. Amen. Friends, God's word says each of you must give as you have made up your mind, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. Friends, we're not in our sanctuary to pass the plate for our Sunday offering, but we do greatly appreciate your gifts to our church. We encourage you to continue sending in your gifts. You can send in a check to Head of Christiana Presbyterian Church at the address found on our Facebook page, or you can use our new online giving platform on hocpc.org under the Give tab. Your gifts help maintain our building, pay our staff, and contribute to all the works of ministry we do toward our mission and our community. So we encourage you to give generously. Thank you for your gifts, and God bless. Friends, we are now going to go into a time of prayer. This is going to be a more general prayer, but if you are joining us at our regular time of 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time on our Head of Christiana Facebook page, I will be offering a Facebook Live following this pre-recorded service of worship where you can share particular joys or concerns that you have, and I'll be happy to lift those up in prayer at that time. This is a prayer from our denomination that has a series of short petitions followed by a time of silence where you can pray silently or out loud wherever you are, any particular concerns for that petition. We'll then close with the Lord's Prayer. We use an ecumenical version of the Lord's Prayer that says sins and sin against us, but you are free to pray in whatever version is most familiar to you. Let us now join our hearts in prayer. Let us pray. Almighty God, in Christ you taught us to pray and promised that we would receive all we ask in his name. Hear now our prayers. For the church universal, we pray, O Lord. For this congregation, its mission and ministry, we pray, O Lord. For the healing of the earth, we pray, O Lord. For 
for peace and justice in the world, we pray, O Lord. For nations and leaders, we pray, O Lord. For our local community, we pray, O Lord. For the poor and oppressed, the bereaved and the lonely, we pray, O Lord. For all who need healing, we pray, O Lord. For the particular individuals and situations in need of prayer, we pray, O Lord. Guide us, O God, by your Holy Spirit, that all of our prayers and all of our lives may serve your will and show your love through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Friends, please join with me in singing our closing hymn today, Shall We Gather at the River, verses 1 and 4. Let us join together and sing.
And now, friends, receive the benediction. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit bless, preserve, and keep you this day and always. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you. Go in peace. Friends, thank you for joining us today for our virtual worship service. We hope you'll join us each and every Sunday morning here on our Head of Christiana Presbyterian Church Facebook page and our YouTube channel for our virtual worship service. We're glad you're here. If you enjoyed this service and found it a blessing, we hope you will like and share it with your friends. Sharing is caring. And if you're watching this on Sunday mornings at 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, I will be doing a Facebook Live following this on our Facebook page, and you can come and pass the peace, share any particular joys or concerns that you have for prayer, and we can just hang out together online for a bit. So I hope you will join us. Thanks again and have a blessed week.